anyway, this talk. Okay, we're, we'll welcome everyone again. You can sit there. Yeah. It's okay. Anyway, welcome scripture buddies. We're so excited you're here. And I love this talk. It's President Irene's talk. All will be well because of your temple covenants from uh, uh, April 2024 conference. And then Doctrine and Covenants 109, 37 through 40. And then I, in the footnotes, uh, President Nelson gave a talk called the Everlasting Covenant. Um, and it's in the Leahona October 22. That is not part of the thing, but I did print it out and I'll have John send it with the next email with the replay because, oh my gosh, because I wanted to know more about um, I wanted to know more about where it says, um, God in paragraph 17, it says he also taught that once we make a covenant with God, we leave neutral ground forever. God will not abandon his relationship with those who have forged such a bond with him. In fact, all the, all those who have made a covenant with God have access to a special kind of love and mercy. And that's a promise, right? A special kind of love and mercy. And I'm like, well, what kind of special love and mercy? Because I made that covenant and I, you know, I got baptized and I, I, I've been to the temple. And so I went and read the talk and it was just incredible. Anyway, I wanted to see if Christine had any insights because I know she's got all her kids are up and she's up on vacation. Do you have any insights you want to share, Gorgeous? Well, I'll, I'll share my experience. So when I read this talk, I've read it a couple times since conference actually, but I marked it up for this morning. And the things that stood out really were the power of God in our lives and how when we're keeping our covenants, he will minister to us and lead us. So the experience I have with that actually, uh, President Nelson asked us a few years ago to pray and ask the Lord what he wanted us to pray for like ask the Lord what to pray for. And I started doing that and I'm a little slow and dense sometimes. So I didn't realize that I started having these thoughts and I didn't realize they were coming from the Lord. So dumb, that's so dumb because I literally prayed and asked what to pray for. But I started having these thoughts that I needed a safe place for my two younger daughters to grow up. Uh, and it wasn't where I was living. They have Down syndrome. And so I started praying and praying for a safe place. And I told my husband, I don't, I don't know that we can stay here forever anymore. I think we might have to leave. And he thought it was crazy, but I kept praying to the Lord and the Lord showed me line upon line, piece by piece of this little puzzle. He showed me over a few months what I, where we needed to go. And I know that was because we were doing our part. We were praying. We were attending our meetings. We were attending the temple. We were um, praying as a family. And so the revelation just flowed to us. And it was undeniable when the answers came. And we ended up buying a house someplace else, which we're going to retire to in a couple more years. And I just love the promises that come when you keep your covenants with the Lord. He will lead you and he will guide you and he will help you and not to, sorry, but I, since I might not be able, I don't know how to go, but since I might not be able to stay on the whole thing, I wanted to share something, a, a couple of things I loved from the scripture as well, because I loved the verses today. Um, let me go to it real quick. I marked it as well. Oh, I'm glad so, you're going to share about the scriptures from 109. Yes. They're so beautiful. So mm -hmm. I love that he, he pleads with the Lord, put on thy servants, the testimony of the covenant. I have experienced that as I've, the more I go to the temple, the more it strengthens my covenant, but also the more it strengthens my testimony of my covenants and of keeping my covenants. And then I love that he promises that thy people may not faint in the day of trouble. Like he asked the Lord to bless them, that they will not faint, even when things get really hard. And then later on in verse 39, at the end, it says that they may gather out of that city, the righteous. So I think we see that happening. I mean, we have, in, at least where we're at, or uh, Helene and John and I are at, that we have this new temple being built. 
that's only 19 miles from another temple, even though the membership seems to be decreasing, the Lord must be preparing the people for something that they may gather out of that city, the righteous, that they may come forth to Zion or to her stakes, the place of thine appointment with songs of everlasting joy. And until this be accomplished, let not thy judgment fall upon that city. And I don't know. I just have seen that in my life in the 20 years we've lived where we're at right now, the Lord blessing his people. And I think we're going to see things get a lot harder. And I think we're going to see ourselves get a lot stronger because the Lord is going to bless us to withstand those last days. Um, anyway, when, when he told me where I needed to go, which my husband didn't want to go there to that particular place, he wasn't super happy about it, but I won't even tell you where it is because honestly, you should go where the Lord tells you to go. But when you told us where we needed to go, my husband wasn't thrilled about it, but I can see now the hand of the Lord in that. And that he prepared a place for my girls that was safe, that would have a community of other Down syndrome families that um, would that would that they would be able to grow up with for the rest of their lives. And God is just really good. I think when I read all this, I just saw how good God is and that he never remains indebted. So when we worship him by keeping our covenants, he pours blessings upon us like we we can't do more than he will give back. And, and that is something I just am so grateful for about him. Isn't that wonderful? Thanks for sharing, Gorgeous. I appreciate you so much. Um, what was I going to say? I want to just read. I know there's a comment. I'll have to read the comment in just a second from Catherine. Right here uh, in this talk of um, the Everlasting Covenant by Russell M. Nelson, this is what I love. It says that love, that love, that he loves you enough for, to take to help reveal to you and your family that there's a better place for you to live and a safer place for you to live and be connected. And it says, once we make a covenant with God, we leave neutral ground forever. God will not abandon his relationship with those who have forged such a bond with him. In fact, all those who have made a covenant with God have access to a special kind of love and mercy. In the Hebrew language, the co that covenantal love is called hesed. Hesed is, has no adequate English equivalent. Translators of the King James Version of the Bible must have struggled with how to render hesed in English. They often chose loving kindness. This captures much, but not all of the meaning of hesed. All uh, other translations also rendered such as mercy and goodness said is a unique term describing a covenant relationship in which both parties are bound to be loyal and faithful to each other. A celestial marriage is a covenant relationship. A husband and wife make a covenant with God and with each other to be loyal and faithful to each other. said is a special kind of love and mercy that God feels for and extends to those who have made a covenant with him and we reciprocate with said for him. Um, because God has, has said for those who have covenanted with him, he will love them. He will continue to work with them and offer them opportunities to change. He will forgive them when they repent. And should they stray, he will help them find their way back to him. Anyway, once you've made a covenant with God, our relationship becomes much closer. And now we are bound together because of our covenant with him. So I just love that. I wanted to see what Catherine had to say in the comments. Let me see. I got to find the chat here. Has said, somebody wrote has said. Um, I, I can't was, see. I was just writing. So like along with has said, one of my professors, um, Carrie Mulstein, I put his name in there because it just, if people wanted to know the spelling, but um, he is an Egyptologist professor and he was my professor when I was studying in BYU Jerusalem. And I just put that plug in because I always do that when we come up with this topic to anyone who's interested. He writes a lot about Hesed in his books um, and kind of articulates it. Cause like you just read from the prophet, there's not a direct translation to in our English language. But I also think that's beautiful because then that kind of urges us to keep studying the idea of it and having the spirit teach us like how we felt that portion of chesed and all that in our lives. 
Um, and I know he has a podcast about it as well, but I also loved, um, and I wrote it there in the chat. He talks about in the Abrahamic covenant, God made the following with Abraham. And when I personally read this, I went, I was going through the reading the book of Mormon through again, and I chose to go through and mark all of these evidences in the book of Mormon. And it just came alive to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, the book of Mormon is all about the Abrahamic covenant. But um, I wrote it there. If anyone wants, there's seven things he talks about that um, Abraham would be innumerable, have innumerable seed. God would protect Abraham and his seed. Um, Abraham's seed would have a promised land. This land would prosper and yield abundantly for Abraham and his seed. And the earth would be blessed by Abraham's seed. Rulers would come from Abraham's seed. And Abraham and his seed must carry the gospel and its attendant ordinances to all the earth. So I just think it's beautiful. And it really opened my eyes to see, okay, we're not just talking about like when I'm in the scriptures, not when I just see the word covenant, but anytime I see God, oh, he prospered them. Oh, he protected them. Oh, he, you know, fought their battles with them. I'm like, oh, that's all that is the covenant. That's what that means. Yeah. It, it's all sprinkled throughout and we're part of the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant, right? And, um, and then we're adopted in if, if, if that's not our lineage, when we're baptized, right. To, to, and, the, and then that's why the gathering on both sides of the veil are so important right now, because we're gathering on the missionary work here on the earth. And then we're, we're gathering by doing our temple work, uh, for our kindred dead. Right. And it's, it's a, it's a two prong process, this gathering, which is so important and in the fulfilling of the Abrahamic covenant, right? Which is pretty cool. Does anyone want to add anything about this subject before we move on to something else on this? Beverly's joining. Go ahead. Who wanted to talk? Oh, I just had one more comment with that idea that you just said um, in verse 39 of the Doctrine and Covenants. I just loved how um, at the end he says that that we may come forth to, okay, let's see, I should back up a little bit more, that they may gather out of that city the righteous, that they may come forth to Zion or to her stakes, the places of thine appointment with songs of everlasting joy. And I love that with songs of everlasting joy, because I was thinking, okay, that's talking about, you know, missionary work, bringing people to the gospel, um, gathering Israel, but it's not just, oh yeah, they were baptized, like the physical action of it, but they had in their heart songs of everlasting joy. And I loved, it reminded me of that quote that you had said um, in the talk from the prophet where you've left neutral ground, um, and he wants, and then again, like in the talk, I love how Elder Iring says he invites you. I can't remember which um, paragraph it was, but he invites you to really change your life because it's a life. He talked about how it's a lifetime of pattern of um, giving your full heart, might, mind, and strength. So I feel like in both of in the scripture and the talk this week, it's just beautiful because. It's this urging of like, we want you to become a new creature. Yes. And, and that is what it is. I love that it. It's about joy. Right. And that, um, we men are that we might have joy, right. That is our real, our real, a real promise. Right. And, um, what was I going to say? Aline, did you have something you wanted to add? Is Allie here? Our circumstances because of our covenants. Oh, start over. We couldn't hear you. Now we can hear you. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, good. Uh -huh. Well, I just felt like we we're supposed to have joy no matter our circumstances. So um, I, I can I re read uh, from another talk? This really yeah. fits in. And it's where he quoted the words to a song, Be Still My Soul. Thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. 
all now mysterious shall be bright at last. And then they went on to say the next verse of come, come ye saints, no toil nor labor fear, but with joy wend your way. Though hard to you this journey may appear, grace shall be as your day. And should we die before our journey's through, happy day, all is well. Why? Because of our covenants. And that's why the saints gathered 24-7 in Nauvoo before they left to get their covenants sealed upon them. That's our protection and that's our hope and that's our joy. When I was getting a divorce, um, people, I, I, it was uh, the only thing that kept me going was that I had been in, sealed in the temple. And I knew this divorce could not take anything away from me. Other people I heard say, why did I marry in the temple? Look at this, it didn't work out. But I thought, what are you saying? That's the only thing that makes it all worth it. You get to keep everything. You're not losing a thing because of the temple. And that was what kept me going with my covenants. And I knew my children were mine. I knew I'd be promised a husband somewhere someday. I knew everything would work out. That even though I was torn apart, I still had joy deep down inside. I love that. And that totally goes with when he talks about they went to the temple for a ceiling, right? Uh, President Irene and his wife, Kathy, and they got a babysitter to watch their boys. Right. And then, and then they found out when they were walking out of the temple that the, the dam broke and he, um, the Teton dam broke and collapsed and 80 billion gallons went through, right? And so our thoughts turned to the safety of our children and hundreds of college students and faculty because he had just, you know, was the president of BYU, um, Idaho, probably Rick's college back then and a community we loved, right? And um, they couldn't, there was no cell phones. They couldn't get a hold of anyone, right? And they had to stay the night in the local hotel. And this is so funny. I can totally relate to this. They knelt together and prayed and then and, for, and pleaded with Heavenly Father for the safety of their children and the thousands of others affected by the tragic event. And uh, she said he said his wife was pacing the floors early hours in the morning and with worry about her children. And he said, despite my own concerns, I was able to put my mind to ease and fall asleep. And that reminds me of me and John, because John can sleep through anything, no matter what's going on. And I'm like, up going, how, how can he, so jealous of his ability to sleep, you know, even amidst the, what's going on. And, and then she woke him up, which I've woken John up a million times in our marriage during uh, that. Sleep from, during this. <laughs> yeah, how can you sleep? Like, I need a blessing in the middle of the night. And I love that um, she said, Hal, how can you sleep at a time like this? And these words came clear. This is in paragraph six and seven. The words came clearly to my heart and mind. I said to my wife, Kathy, whatever the outcome, all will be well because of the temple. We have made covenants with God and have been sealed as an eternal family. And um, I, I just love that, right? And um, in paragraph nine, he says, um, as President Monson best illustrates, Kathy and I felt on that unf unforgettable night, as we attend the temple, there can come to us a dimension of spirituality and a feeling of peace. We will grasp the true meaning of the words of the Savior when he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid from John 14, 27. So the, 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 the going to the temple gives us a peace that it's almost like unexplainable, right? Like you can be in the midst, like you said, Aline, of a divorce and still experience peaceful moments. Lori, did you want to say anything? I've been listening and <clears throat> it's all been really good. Um, I do remember, um, back in 2011, 2012, when I was going through some really difficult health issues. And the only place that I could find peace was attending the temple. We lived in Oklahoma. <clears throat> so I would have to drive about 80 miles each way. Um, but it actually was faster than coming from Orange County to LA to the LA temple. 
because <laughs> of traffic. Um, but I do remember going as often as I possibly could. Um, and the only time that I could really feel that peace is when I was in the temple. Is there's just something special there that is so different um, than any other place. Um, maybe it's because it's so devoted to uh, the covenants and uh, everything in the temple is just focused on Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. And um, it's just a very safe, peaceful place um, where the spirit is strong and pretty much everybody's there for the same type of purpose. And um, I just remember that as a really special time uh, in my life that brought uh, so much peace that I couldn't find anywhere else. So I, I relate with that. And and um, and I really like um, what, the, is it Allie that was talking about her divorce and um, how she didn't feel like anything was being taken away from her um, that all the things that she received in the temple was still hers. Um, I also went through a divorce um, from temple marriage, and I did not have that perspective. I felt very lost and broken, and uh, my promises broken. And um, so I really appreciate her share, and to, uh, for to go back and reevaluate myself, and um, um, just kind of uh, my response was different than that. Um, but I appreciate hers. So thank you. Isn't it nice that we can all share our ex experiences and perspectives and help each other and see things differently? Thanks for sharing, Lori. Um, Mom, did you want to share? Is my mom on here? She was. Hold on, we can't hear her. Or well, is she still here? Pardon me. Is I my mom here? Her. Everybody's oh, there. on mute except when they're talking, so. Okay, go ahead, Mom. So you oh, got to okay. go back to wherever you started, Liz. Okie doke. Uh, I especially liked paragraph seven, where it talks about whatever the outcome, all will be well because of the temple. We have made covenants with God and have been sealed as an eternal family. And when my daughter Pam died... It was not easy. It was one of the toughest things I've ever had to experience. But I remember she is sealed to me and to my sweetheart. She's sealed to her husband and her children were born under the covenant. And that gave me great comfort, even at a very, very difficult time. Yeah, it is a great comfort, right? Yeah. And I don't think we even understand as I go to the temple each week, I've been trying to go um, three or four times a week. And I know mom's been going a lot more now. -y. And I'm learning more and more, but I still don't even think, I think we only have a little glimpse or glimmer of what the beautiful blessings and the promises are that, that, that has said that Heavenly, uh, that Heavenly Father and God and Jesus have for us, right? And um, it, it doesn't mean we don't miss Pam, right? Of oh, course. Of course. But it does give us a different perspective and a different way to process loss and grief. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how grateful. Um, we've been doing so much more family history work, doing the names for our families. Right. And I, I had the thought, uh, the spirit told me how grateful our 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 the generations that have gone beyond us are for, you know how like when you see the cogs of, of a, I'm not probably saying this right, but like a machine and, and like the wheels are moving and it makes it like I, I'll work like some kind of a machine and it works. That as we progress, our, you know, you get them baptized and then their initiatory and then their endowment and their ceilings, we're helping them progress through and they're so grateful, right? That they've waited a long time. Anything else, mom? No, <clears throat> no, darling. That was okay. it. Thanks for sharing. I love that promise because that's a promise, right? That's right. Yeah, for all of us, right? Okay, who ha who else is on here that would like to share? Beverly, I, my cousin Beverly's here now. Isn't that the cutest? Beverly, do you want to share something? Yeah, I would love to. Um, uh, One thing I just want to say before I share is... Um, I love the safety of this space. 
it's amazing that we can be so raw with each other. And I absolutely am loving this so much. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me jump in. We're glad you're here. Um, I was thinking that um, <clears throat> that it was, I know that it's not really a metaphor. It's, it's a, literally a something that happened to Elder Iring, <clears throat> but um, yet the metaphor of the flood, you know, there's a flood and the temple is on high ground, uh, whether it is literally or not on high ground, we can't always get a temple, a mountain for the temple to be on. But, but, you know, historically, it was always on the mountaintop. That was where you met God was on the mountaintop. And, um, and that's high ground, it's safe ground um, in the presence of a flood. And, um, <clears throat> And so for me, that's a, a metaphor that I keep with me. I uh, often feel flooded and, um, you know, in some kind of desperate need. And, um, and I, you know, my boys have uh, autism. Um, most of them have I have four boys and three of them have autism. And, um, <clears throat> and that kind of brings its own flood. And it's mostly something that they suffer, but, um, my situation with them is more of a trying to find a way to help, trying to find the right kind of lifeline to to throw to them. And um, and the temple is such a lifeline. Um, my uh, my third boy, Isaiah, is serving a service mission and he uh, he wouldn't be able to serve a mission at all if there wasn't such a thing. And I'm so grateful for President Nelson um, hearing the spirit on that to be able to open up this opportunity for him. And he goes to the temple every week as part of his service mission. And it's absolutely brightened his soul and, um, and unknotted things that were knotted for him. And uh, really, really grateful for the temple. And, and, you know, that's not, kind of, you know, if you had to list the blessings that come from the temple, I, you know, it wouldn't have occurred to me to list it can unknot some autistic um, confusion, you know, I wouldn't have known to put that on the list, but, um, but it does that too. Surprising blessings that we don't expect, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gorgeous cousin. This is so fun. Oh my gosh, you guys. And you know, um, I met, is it, I don't know if it's Mary or Mari. I met Mary or Mari and I gave a keynote speech in um, Austin, Texas. And Ma Mari, do you want to share? Are you able to share? I don't know if you are. Yes. Hi. Hi, Colleen. Um, I'm Mari Hunziker and I live in the Austin, uh, Texas stake. Um, and I am, hold on, sorry. I am so grateful that to be here today. Um, I met Colleen at a women's conference. Gosh, I don't remember. Was that April? I don't know. No, it was like last year sometime. This year earlier, um, yeah. And um, I, I'm i legally blind and I can resonate with um, your cousin who just spoke about her sons that have autism. I, um, I have not been to the temple in, in quite some time. But I used to go pretty regularly um, in my in in another ward, and and we've just had so so many um, uh, what's it called? I can't think. Um, turnover, not turnover, but um, uh, splits. Our our ward has split and changed so much recently. Um, people have moved away, and people have just so I haven't found my group of temple goers to attend the temple with yet um again but when I was going I had I felt the spirit so strongly and um I'm not able to drive on my own and, and get there on my own so I do have to unfortunately rely on the mercy and, and, and tenderness of others to help me fulfill those blessings um but I've seen, and then I have a friend who's completely blind, um, who's also gone through the temple and she was very blessed um, by that experience um, as well. And, and I thought that was really exciting. So people with disabilities are, I think not, I would, I don't wanna say doubly 
blessed because it's so challenging to just get to the temple um physically meaning um you know d driving there getting there just finding a ride that kind of thing in in for my personal experience um but when you get there it is just amazing um and i have felt those blessings and i think it's such a wonderful thing and i feel very blessed to have met colleen and to have continued this this friendship um i think i think the lord has really um placed you in my life because i'm going through so much right now that i have to laugh because otherwise i'd cry but oh my um so much right now and um this is wonderful i'm i, I feel so grateful thank you and i'm Sorry for going on and on. <clears throat> okay, Mari, we're so glad you're here. And never apologize for going on and on because we're all here to share and com and connect with each other. And it's interesting, Heavenly Father is so aware of you because when you reached out um, yesterday, I'm like, I said, Heavenly Father, because you said you were having, you know, you, you were grateful that we were friends and that you were, had a lot going on. And I've had a lot go on in my life, uh, multiple, I call them opportunities to grow and uh, become more like God and um, and learn more about his character and our own character. And I asked him, Father, besides praying for Mari, what else can I do for her? And he said, you should invite her to join scripture buddies with you. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. So it was, we have to give credit where credit's due. Heavenly Father has the best ideas, right? I can't, <laughs> and a lot of people say, Colleen, that's so good. I'm like, oh yeah, that's, Heavenly Father told me to do that. Like, I, I, I want to always make sure I give credit for all the great things I do. It's all because I have this really beautiful, easy conversation with Heavenly Father frequently. And I have the gift. My grandma had that gift. And I, I, I sought after that gift. And so as I learned to trust Heavenly Father more, and I, I, I actually believe all of us can do this because I wasn't born with this gift. So I sought after this gift that we can help bless each other's lives and lift each other up. And I don't think it's any accident that I was the keynote speaker in Austin. I, you sat at my table or I sat at your table and then we became friends. And, um, and I'm, so I'm grateful for that. And I love in So I hope you'll keep joining us, especially all our new friends here in paragraph 25 of uh, elder Irene's talk. It says trials, challenges, and heartaches will surely come to all of us. And boy, haven't we all experienced that in the past and currently, right? Like um, none of us are immune from thorns of the flesh. Yet as we attend the temple and remember our covenants, we can prepare to receive personal direction from the Lord, which is a promise. You know me, guys. I'm always looking for the promise. What's in it for Colleen Lowe? Where's my promises, right? What's... And right, personal direction from the Lord. And then I love this. This is so awesome. And we never know sometimes what is in the future. It says in paragraph 26, when Kathy and I were married and sealed in the Logan, Utah temple, which is such a beautiful temple, then Elder Spencer W. Kimball, which that's his uncle, I think, because Camilla Kimball was an Irene. Um, Spencer W. Kimball performed our sealing. In the few words he spoke, he gave this counsel, Hal and Kathy, live so that when the call comes, you can walk away easily. Initially, we did not understand what that counsel meant for us, but we did our best to live our lives in such a way that we would be prepared to leave to serve the Lord when the call came. After, um, after we had been married nearly 10 years, an unanticipated call from the Commissioner of Church Education, Neil A. Maxwell, came. The loving counsel given by President Kimball in the temple, we were able to walk away easily, became a reality. Kathy and I received a call to leave what seemed to be an ideal, I know that's not the word, an idyllic family situation in California to serve in an assignment and in a place that I knew nothing about. However, our family was ready to leave because a prophet in the Holy Temple, a place of revelation, saw a future event for which we were prepared. 
And it says, my dear brothers and sisters, I bear witness that there's nothing more important than honoring the covenants you've made or may make in the temple. No matter where you are in the covenant path, I urge you to qualify, become eligible to attend the temple. Visit as frequently as circumstances will allow. Make and keep your covenants with God. And I can assure you the same truth I shared with Kathy in the middle of the night, nearly five decades ago in Idaho Falls Motel Room. No matter what the outcome, all will be well because of the temple covenants. And I just love that when we submit our will to Heavenly Father's will, I think life just gets better and better. And we trust him more and um, realize and have more trust in his timing and in that everything is going to work out. Even when it doesn't seem like it's working out for us, it is working out for us. Um. Kathy, I mean, uh, Katie, we haven't heard from Katie, and um, then we'll ask Irene if she wants to share. But Katie, do you have any insights you'd like to share? Yeah. Vivian? Yeah, share. And then Vivian, we haven't heard from Vivian either yet. Oh, good. So many fun people. Um, so I just love the focus on the temple in this talk. Um, I took some notes off to the side. Um, I, a while ago, I read a book um, called Far Above Rubies. And the book, the, the gist of the book, <laughs> I mean, she talks about Proverbs 31 and what makes a virtuous woman and what virtue means and how that's, um, Christ uses the word virtue when he's speaking of the woman who touches his hem and it's translated to be power. Anyway, <laughs> so if you think of being a virtuous woman, um, it's a woman of power, of God's power, right? And when we go to the temple, we make covenants and we receive God's power there. And that's aligned with how we live our lives, of whether or not we keep our covenants, right? Um, and in the book, she also mentions about um, the parable of meeting the bridegroom, that each person in the church is symbolically a bride for Christ even the men, <laughs> um, in that God is wanting to establish a relationship with us of mutual choosing. God always chooses us. He always wants us to return to be with him. And we are then aligning our lives to receive more of his truth, more of his power more of our ability to choose him back. So when we make a covenant, even at baptism, we are choosing God and he is choosing us. And that is the two-way promise that we will choose each other. And, um, and this talk has a couple of places where, where that is um, hinted at, right? So, so in the temple, he says that it's an echo of heaven. He describes the experience, right? And that it's a place that the Lord can come. Temple attendance reminds us of the eternal nature of our spirits, our relationship with the Father and Jesus Christ, and our ultimate de desire to return to them. And I love that the temple like has the three pillars of salvation, the creation, the fall, and the atonement. Because um, I feel like all too often, we're not focusing on what a grace it is to just exist and to be able to be connected to one another. Yeah, that's really good, right? And I love that that's in paragraph 12. As we attend the temple, we can be reminded of our eternal nature, of our spirits, our relationship with the Father and His divine Son, and our ultimate desire to return to our heavenly home. Right? I just love that. Thanks, Katie, for pointing that out. And I love that um, uh, far above rubies, virtue equals power. We are all brides, even the men. God always chooses us, right? It's just us. We get to determine how closely bound we are with Him, right? 
because he, he's always there. It's, it's us to do, we get to choose the relationship we have with Jesus and Heavenly Father, right? That we get to, we, we choose that. And I love in paragraph 22, it's another promise, right? Which I love promises that it, um, honoring marriage and family covenants in the temples of God will provide protection and evil of, of selfishness and pride. I love that because I can be very selfish and have pride and um, and the evil. I just really want protection from all of that, right? Because I just talked to a friend and and that another friend that I can see is um, processing things in a way that will that is and making choices that are leading them off the covenant path. And um, I just told Heavenly Father, help me stay on the covenant path. Help me not to be deceived and help me to love and fellowship this person to the best of my ability, no matter what decisions they make, but that, that hopefully maybe through my loving them, not judging them, but loving them, they, they might maybe see that they're, they're getting off course, right? Or they are, they're not just getting off course, they are off course. And, um, but, but my job is to just love people, right? But I just wanna, I just see so many people being deceived today and Satan is real. And he goes after covenant women and men, but, it's, but I feel like he really goes after covenant women and men um, because we're making such a big impact in the world, you know, as covenant keepers and of spreading light and helping people. Um, uh, Vivian, are you still here? I can't see that well. Is Vivian yes, here? here? I would love to hear your insights, gorgeous. Um. Well, as I was reading it, there's quite a few spots that I love because um, President Iring is one of my favorite speakers. Uh, and just the beautiful things that he reminds us of, of the temple, of the covenants that we make. Um, I, do, I did like his story of, of um, pacing because it reminds me of, of um, not necessarily, you know, it reminds me of how often I pace and then the spirit talks to me and tells me, why are you worrying so much? Things, um, you know, my husband, and I kind of said, well, it is what it is. And with that, it, he just, the Holy Ghost always talks to me that I need to stop pacing and just put it in the Lord's hand. And, uh, that's very hard for me because I tend to be a very controlling person with my schedule and things that are happening. Um, but it's a beautiful reminder of, of the Lord. Um, because of our temple covenants, he is aware of us and he knows that we are making an effort to, to have a relationship with him. And and that's how we receive these these wonderful blessings of of sometimes health of sometimes well mental health sometimes it just it's not just it mentally it's physically sometimes it's it's temporal with jobs and 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 sometimes it's with family and and then that the next part that really kind of goes along with it is um. In paragraph 23, talks <gasps> about cons consistent care of brothers and sisters for each other. And that it will only come with persistent efforts to lead your family in the Lord's way. Um, it reminds me of an experience I had when my boys were little. One of my sons not only had ADHD, but he also had night terrors. And that's scary when you have a, a seven-year-old running through your house who's scared of you and wanting to leave the house in the middle of the night. And um, was that was difficult. And uh, we would just try and hold him. And his younger brother saw that. He heard it because he shared a room. And he would say the sweetest prayers for his brother, asking the Lord to help him not have so many night terrors. And uh, over time, my son's night terrors 
did um, stop. But I just am reminded of that sweet prayer this little five-year-old boy was saying for his brother. And it was just um, beautiful. And it just reminds me of the importance that even if our children are not within the gospel, they're good people because they think about each other um, and and they still do pray for each other. I hear my sons who are inactive. When we get together for family prayer, we ask them, would you join us? And they do. And their youngest brother prays for each of them. And, and they have this relationship that's beautiful and they look out for each other. But I was also thinking of, it's not just uh, blood brothers and sisters. It's also everyone that's around us. I, I know that now that I go to the temple and work there, I make an effort to think about those who need temple blessings. And I put their names on the, on the prayer list. And uh, I, it has made me more aware of people around me and what their needs are and, and what else I can do for them. They may not be members of the church. They may not be active members. They, they may be strong members, but that paragraph just reminds me of when we, you know, because he says when siblings pray for each other and serve each other, hearts will be softened and turn to each other and to their parents. And if we do this for each other, we're strengthening each other and and strengthening our, our bond with Heavenly Father and hopefully turning all our brothers and sisters to to him, returning them to him as we continue to pray and serve each other. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> They're so beautiful, Vivian. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I love that we can pray for each other and have our siblings pray for each other and that we can pray even for opportunities to uplift each other. Um, we had one of our sons, our youngest, just moved to Texas two weeks ago. And um, sometimes Mason will uh, say prayers with us a lot of times. And um, his older brother, and he always prays by name for everyone in our family, his grandparents and his um, cousins and aunt, aunts and uncles and his siblings. And it is beautiful to hear your kids pray for your other kids. And I love that. Irene, do you want to share anything gorgeous? I loved your insights. I don't know if you want to share. Well, <clears throat> um, this reminded me of when I was on my mission. Um, one night, my sister felt very distraught. She knew something was wrong, but she didn't know what. And she went downstairs to my mom and dad and told them, there's something wrong and we have to pray. And they prayed with her and they, they prayed for a long time. And, and they thought it might be about me because I was the only one that was away that time. And as it happens, <laughs> back then, you know, we didn't have the internet and letters were really slow. And I was all the way on the other side of the world in Norway. And as so they didn't find out for two weeks uh, or close to two weeks that that night I had been attacked. And we didn't know if he was going to, we didn't know if he followed us home and we had we lived on the first floor it had french glass french doors to our bedroom and we didn't have a telephone so we just stayed inside and shook all night <laughs> and i don't i don't know if if their prayers made it so he didn't come back but it it is clear to me that prayer 
makes a difference and that we can be prompted by the spirit to pray um, and um, I loved that he told about um, Elder Iron told about that he I guess just felt peace um, we can feel peace in situations where it doesn't make any sense to feel peace. It's just a gift. It's a blessing from God uh, because of the, uh, the priesthood and because of what we've been promised. And I've experienced that too. So, <laughs> I love that. Thanks for sharing. I think that um, the peace that comes during the chaos, right? When you're in a chaotic situation or a storm and, um, and when we can pray, right? We have that direct line of communication and the heavens are open and we can talk and to Heavenly Father. And then if we get a chance, if we're near a temple or we can get to a temple, getting to a temple really, um, I always feel peace. I remember um, last year uh, at women's conference, not this year, but last year, um, something happened that I was, I, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but anyway, something happened where I was like, oh my gosh, it was very stressful. And it was a life or death situation for our son. And um, I really wished I could get a priesthood blessing, but I really didn't know anyone that I felt comfortable getting one from in Utah. And the thought came to me, go to the temple. I was with my mom and Ellie. So they went out to dinner and I went to the temple. And then the next day, um, and I felt better being in the temple, but I had posted pictures. I felt prompted to post that I'd been to the temple. And I was in women's conference with them at a in some class. And I felt prompted to check Facebook and somebody I know from California that also has a house in Utah um, posted, oh, I just came out from doing the early morning session at the Provo Temple. And Heavenly Father said, text him and see if he can give you a blessing. I'm like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And so he said, yes, he could. And uh, he came and gave me a blessing. And um, they the at BYU, they found a room that was pretty much empty. And then we just told those people that we were gonna have them give me a blessing. It was the most beautiful blessing. And um, and I just felt so much peace after the temple and I could sleep. And then that day, the next day, cause I'm a, I'm a world-class warrior too. I come from a long line of warriors. We were, uh, Grandma Ashley was, had a, a big badge. You didn't know it, but she had a big badge, almost like a shield that said number one warrior. And uh, she sat right there. <laughs> She sat in her chair and worried and prayed for everyone all day. So I thought worry was like a really good thing because my grandma worried all the time. But actually I learned, I mean, she she was awesome. And, and she's like my hero and idol. Like I, my goal is to be like her. Minus the worry. And Heavenly Father told me, let go of the worry because worry doesn't serve anyone. And we don't have control over these things. And so if I, I could talk to Grandma Ashley today, I would tell her, Grandma, quit worrying, right? Just, but um, that was what she did and uh, I can feel her around me so much um she's like my guardian angel because you know she lived with us when I was a kid and so I feel like a special bond to her but I just know that that blessing meant a lot and going to the temple and I just know that as we go to the temple and bind ourselves to God and trust him more that we'll be blessed does anyone else want to share anything else I know cousin Lori's there, but I think she can't talk today. She's got something going on. Let me put my glasses on. I don't think she's on anymore, babe. Oh, she's not? I see her. But... Well, and I, I did have something else to say. In paragraph 20, I'll go ahead and read it. Yeah, perfect. He says, you may then experience a feeling of light and hope, testifying that the promises are true. You will come to know that every covenant with God is an opportunity to draw closer to him, which will then create a desire in your heart to keep temple covenants. 
Um, and that's like like a cycle, right? We have the hope in our, the promises of the covenant. We're able to know that the covenant draws us closer to God. And then that enlivens our desire to keep covenants, which adds more hope, right? So it's like a, a developmental process. And then in 18, he says, qualifying to make sacred covenants is not a one-time effort, but a lifetime pattern. The Lord has said it will take our full heart, might, mind, and strength. Um, and then I I just wanted to add that like both this talk and DNC 109 um talk about peace. This one he it's like at the end of paragraph nine, he quotes about having um Christ leave his peace with us, give his peace to us, and that our heart let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, and then in DNC 109, it's in section or verse 39. And I'll go ahead and read that section. It says that they might gather out of that city the righteous, that they may come forth to Zion, to her stakes. Oh, sorry, it's before that. I'll just read the whole verse. And whatsoever city the servant shall enter, and the people of that city receive their testimony. Let thy peace and thy salvation be upon that city, that they may gather out of that city the righteous, that they may come forth to Zion to her st- or to her stakes, the places of thine appointment with songs of everlasting joy. Um, and I just think that, that the temple can't just be such a source of both peace and salvation. And that really is one of the biggest goals. Um, one of the biggest reasons it's desirable to want to return to live with Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ is that it means continual development, continual progress, and continual peace um, and an investment, right? God is always invested in us. So becoming a person that continually invests in yourself and in others is a very godly attribute. Katie, thank you for sharing that. And um, all of you, thank you for sharing from your hearts. My my testimony in Jesus Christ is uplifted in, in the power of Temple Covenants by studying and talking and sharing with all of you and hearing your light that's at in your oil is just adding into my little oil and my little lamp and um, helping it be strengthened. And for me, Tuesdays become a really sacred day because I have um, this time with you. And then uh, we work in the temple on Tuesdays. So I go from this to, I have to do a little bit of work in the middle and then I go and um, with John and then we serve in the temple and my prayer every time I go to the temple is that for each patron that comes in contact with me, that they can feel God's love through their interactions with me as they're, they're uh, in the temple with their temple experience. Because so many people come to the temple with a heavy heart and with a lot on their mind. And I feel like um, we live in very turbulent times. And so as we can, I love that when we get baptized, uh, and we, we promise to bear one another's burdens. And I feel like one of the ways we can bear one another's burdens is to just uh, hold space for each other and to not judge each other and to just, just to be there and to listen and to love and love each other. And I want to let you know how much I know that Jesus is the Christ and that he's my best friend. And I'm grateful for this time to talk about him with all of you. It's really, um, it's the highlight of my week, basically. I just love you guys so much. And next week, we're going to be studying, oh, it's July 4th. Oh, July 4th, um, 9 o'clock. We'll have to think of that. We'll, we'll do, I think we'll do it. <laughs> That's, oh, no, July 4th is for her. So we'll be July 2nd, right? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Uh, it's, it's Dale Renlund's talk, The Power, Virtuous Cycle of the Doctrine of Christ. And then Doctrine and Covenants 109, uh, verses 41 through 44. And I can't wait to join with you guys next week. And I just want you to know that you're so loved and that 
I love you and Heavenly Father loves you and I believe in you. And if you're ever struggling, I, I'm always available and to talk and hopefully um, we we um, can all get a, become the people that God intended it for us to become because it's really in the becoming, right? It's in the overcoming, but it's also in the becoming and sh shedding off the natural man and becoming more Christ-like, right? So we can um, reap the benefits of being in eternal families forever, right? And, and it's such a small snippet, snippet of, of our existence here on this earth life, even though it seems like eternity here, but our time is not God's time, right? Anyway, I love you guys so much. And thank you to John Lowe for setting this all up because I have a recording studio here in the house. Thanks to John Lowe. And he sets up all these cameras and lights and Zoom. And I don't know how to do any of that. So bless <laughs> John Lowe's part. Right? Anyway. Yeah. Thank you, John. Yeah. So You're great. Awesome. Thanks, Colleen. Yeah, thank you guys. And look, my cousin's on here. My cousin from growing up as a kid. Is that so fun, right? 